This week, we are going to be talking about how you can heal when you didn't get the birth that you wanted. My name is Sherry Hopkins. Sarah Cervillo. We just wanted to jump into this topic because we see it so often from our end. Statistically speaking, about 10% of the population want a natural childbirth. So that's kind of what we're talking about. However, this video would really apply to you if you didn't get the birth that you wanted. The reason why sometimes that can be so shocking to that 10% is because you've invested a lot of time, energy, and money into getting birth to be a specific way. Mm -hmm. You've maybe hired doulas, you've hired a midwife, you've developed a birth plan, you've taken a childbirth education class, yeah. and then you go into it with this idea that birth is going to be what you've manifested. So I've always told people having a baby at home is not the hardest thing. The hardest thing is when you are giving up your ideal birth for the health and well-being of yourself. Everybody's perception of their birth story is very real and true to them. Their story is what they are living and feeling. Sometimes we see individuals be very disappointed in that birth outcome, even though they have a healthy baby. Now, how come that term, well, at least I had a healthy baby is so well, Not I feel right. like it's like the least that they can do or anyone can do. Like that's the least, but really the goal should be happiness. Like mm -hmm. there should be, or empowerment, or that you felt like you were an active participant in what was happening, mm -hmm. that you understood your journey in some way. What kind of feelings mm -hmm. come up when you have an unexpected outcome or a traumatic delivery or just a delivery that didn't go the way that you had expected or hoped? And that is feelings of guilt, um, anger, blame, self-doubt. So I think that's why I hate that comment so much, right? Mm -hmm. Well, at least you have a healthy baby because you're almost telling that birthing individual or that birthing partner that the feelings that they're having of disappointment or sadness, that they shouldn't feel that way because they have a healthy baby. Yeah. And of course, somebody feeling sad that the birth didn't go the way they wanted is happy they have a healthy baby. That's just a given. Yeah. So it seems like a stupid thing to say to people. And the reason why you changed that game plan was because you wanted that healthy baby. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a moment where you don't mourn the loss of what you had hoped, whether that was that skin to skin that you expected to get in that first hour or that the breastfeeding didn't happen right away. Whatever that looked like for you, whatever you went through your birth plan and decided it was really important to you and, then, and, that, and that didn't happen. And so let's think about what we say to individuals who've experienced any kind of loss. Well, I mean, we're just in a place of support, right? Like, is there anything I can do for you or just offering to do things, not necessarily asking, but just being like, can I bring you over some meals? Can I take care of your kids? Can I, you know, any of those things, like just being in a place of support, just kind of coming and listening to a person and just allowing them to say what they want to say and not coming from a place of judgment to just know or because that- you have to go into it going, I'm not gonna fix this person. I'm yeah. not gonna make mm -hmm. them process things. Like they yeah. know they've got to need to process their own stuff. Being loved along the way without judgment, without somebody sharing what they think you need. Sarah's 100% right. You're gonna just show up and bring them meals and do their laundry and do the dishes so they, they can go through those stages of maybe grief or loss yeah. and as a midwife one of the hardest things sometimes we have to do is sit on our hands yeah. and allow labor to happen the way that it's supposed to i think as individuals we want we don't want to see other people sad or hurt or mm -hmm. um, struggling but that's generally the best thing we can do is keep our mouth shut when somebody's mm -hmm. reaching out talking to us yeah. and to continue to create that safe space so yeah. you can heal and you can so long as you have individuals in your life that are a safe space for you if you don't have individuals in your life to create a safe space for you i do want you to know there are so many resources mm -hmm. there are more and more professionals on the birth front so it's not necessarily about seeking help because you don't have the skill set to do it but you do need to process and for some women that's journaling for some women that's speaking out loud for some women that's art for some women that's um, getting out and moving whether that be yoga walking going to the gym but in a very healthy way whatever you need to process please don't be afraid to explore those kind of areas and those avenues um, so that you can heal if you have to find a local midwife even 
sure. because she understands exactly what you need. We're never going to charge an individual for sitting and listening to them process their birth. And I think that's an important point too, is that in midwifery care, we're seeing women a lot more often. If you did have a birth that maybe didn't go the way that you wanted, midwifery care is a fantastic model for that because we are spending up to 30 to 45 minutes with you. We can be that listening ear. You can sit in the office and tell us, you know, and cry and, you know, about your expectations or just your experience just in general. And we can help you troubleshoot with some other things that sometimes follow more traumatic deliveries, like sometimes breastfeeding doesn't go great after a C-section, things like that, that we can kind of help support you in that way. And so we tend to see you at least four or so times after you deliver a baby. It isn't just a, you know, delivery and then maybe six weeks later we see you or, you know, that yeah. we're just done at that point. We're not, we're still seeing you quite a few times after that. Here at Well-Rounded Mama, we have several midwives down here as well as lactation counselors and therapists and life coaches because we recognize that we might be part of that story that you're not really ready to talk about. And so finding someone in your life to do that. But yes, I love that aspect mm -hmm. of midwifery care that it's not, for us, it's not just about the prenatal care, or just about the birth. It's about how you're doing in that first year of motherhood as well. So hopefully that helped you by telling you why you might be feeling the way that you feel and some feelings that you potentially might be feeling that are totally normal, as well as giving you some areas of outlet and ways to process and heal, but that everything that you're feeling is, is normal, even if it takes a little bit of time. So thanks for joining us. Please like and subscribe. If you know somebody who's in need, don't hesitate to steer them this way. We would love to talk or chat with them. What should they share below, Sarah, as well? Just any conversation. We also have a Facebook group yeah. um, that's local, and I think there are some people in there as well that don't live here, but mm -hmm. just having a conversation, like you'd be surprised at how many women have the same story as you do, or something similar, or just experiencing the same feelings. There are groups and things out there that you can contact and find friends. Yeah, so let us know what your thoughts are. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. <laughs> I'm sweaty. My pits are sweaty. <laughs> oh, I need a fan. Chase tree. <laughs> Do I need chase tree? I don't know. I should probably not take it. This natural deodorant at its finest. Okay. I always feel like I have to apologize to people when I'm like, sorry for my natural deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we did good.